We focused on lies in the social media, but not those in the dissent. I want to point out the brazen hypocrisy of World Press Freedom Day being hosted by the UK government at the dark time. <laughs> Julian Assange has been persecuted by war criminals and the corrupt that he exposed. Still sitting in positions of power in the government on both sides of the aisle as well as in the much of the media. World Press Freedom! World Press Freedom! World Press Freedom! Imagine the precedent Trump is setting that any country could extradite any foreign journalist or publisher and make them subject to draconian laws, possibly the death penalty, just because they publish truth about the last government's war crimes. No extradition! World Press Freedom! World Press Freedom! Imagine if that state was Saudi Arabia. We call on the world media to stand by their award-winning colleague and Nobel Prize nominee. World Press Freedom! <laughs> Guys, oh, turn around and get a picture oh, of us all. Come out and talk to us. Look after you, citizen! Endless smears and lies about an anti-war hero. You want to know how to get people trusting me more? Tell the truth. Stop delivering a one-sided government-sanctioned narrative. That is what is going on here. Thank you. Um, in being held also accountable for justice, but it's not, I would say, a media freedom issue. Publisher. Well, the Guardian Guardian has done quite a lot on this question of whether he's a journalist or not, and has concluded that he's not. And their story on Manafort was a disgrace. Well, what about free speech? We were just talking about that. We are talking about the source of the source of the panel discussion. Any further comments from my panel? Yeah, we will. We'll be mindful of that. Thank you. Thank you.
And then about a year ago, um, I witnessed the violinist in London, um, Alex Taylor, getting thrown off the streets outside the London Embassy for playing Walsing Matilda. Um, oh. It was Australia Day. He was Australian and he was in London. And uh, just simply playing Walsing Matilda had him thrown off the streets. Um, by the armed task force, I'll have you, <laughs> um, which was ridiculous. And, of course, that got me thinking. He had um, managed to break into uh, mainstream media, which is incredibly hard to do, especially with anything that's positive towards Assange. Um, and um, so I was incredibly inspired by that. I started to get a little bit more interested. I mean, I'd say that my activism started in the Bernie days, though. Um, I was a major Bernie um, supporter. I was in pretty much every Facebook group. Um, and even back in those days, I noticed, particularly in New Zealand, we were suffering from quite bad censorship and algorithms. Um, I noticed it before my American counterparts did. Um, and in fact, they used to say I was just being paranoid, but now I think they're all in, in concur, <laughs> they all concur with me that that's actually what's going on. Um, and perhaps New Zealand is a wonderful place to test out new censorship laws and all that sort of stuff, um, surrounding the truth that was published about Hillary. Um, really the fact that she was quite a war criminal herself and that the choice between Trump and Hillary was just Abom abominable. I mean, like like uh, Assange says, it's gonorrhea versus cholera, isn't it? <laughs> he tried to play this song outside the Ecuadorian embassy, and he was forbidden. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> well, the thing I know, I know is the Nicola Acting High Commissioner of Canada. Not a mention of Julian Assange.